Hello everyone, I'm Nadine, I'm the makeup artist for Gig. How is everyone doing? I know it's it's literally dragging on now, isn't it? And we really just want to get back into sessions. So today I'm going to do something a little bit more fun. Um, it gives you time to be a little bit more creative. Um, so let's get going. I'll write at the end as well. I'm going to set a little task. And if you want to do it, you can. If you don't want to do it, you don't have to, by all means. But I just think it would be really cool if you could send your ideas back in to Stacey so that I could have a look and see how you got on and you can get your parents involved or whatever. Right, before we start, just to let you know, we're going to be using blood today, like fake blood. If anyone's got a funny aversion about blood, then um, I'm just letting you know that we're going to be using blood today because we're going to be doing some special FX stuff. And I want you to find stuff around your house to do this video with. I want you to be completely creative. I'm not going to tell you what to use. I'm going to give you some ideas, but I want you to try all different things to see what effects you can come up with just with the stuff that you've got at home. Okay. Right. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a blood recipe. It's a really easy recipe. You can get um, your ingredients from the shop and it's mouth safe and it's food grade. So what you're going to need is maple syrup or golden syrup or honey. Um, maple syrup is better for colour, um, golden syrup is better for texture, honey's quite sticky but it still works. Um, and then glycerin, what you can also find in the cake baking aisle, it's like a little bottle, it looks like the food colouring bottles but it's glycerin. And then you can get red food colouring, blue food colouring, green food colouring and black food colouring. <laughs> that was a mouthful. And then what I want you to do, I want you to make tiny portions of your own fake blood in different ratios. So I want you to start adding red and then adding a bit of blue, maybe drop by drop, because depending on how old the blood is, will depend on the colour of the blood. Fresh blood is going to be very bright and older blood will be quite dark. I'm going to be using one that's quite dark. And what you can also do is there's a type of blood I'm going to show you just so that you know. And it's called wound filler and it just looks like raspberry jam, if I'm honest. And it's very jelly like, but it goes into cuts as if it's kind of congealing. And I want you to work out how you can try and make some wound filler blood, some fresh blood. So this is very runny. Let me show you. This is very dark as well. Try and look at the consistency. So it's not running too much, but it is runny blood. Don't look at my nails, I can't help it, they're rubbish. Okay? And then let me show you the wound filler on my high end. I'm just gonna get my little spatula. You see the difference? How can you get that? Maybe some gelatin that you use that you can get in the cake baking aisle. Maybe you can put some coffee grounds in it and see what happens there. But I want you to mess around with the ratio and the colour. So you can make a brighter blood, which would be more stage. These are more like HD real to colour blood once it hits oxygen. And things like that. And then what you can also do is if your mum or your dad has got or whoever you're with has got a spare sponge in the kitchen you can grab it and I want you to cut it in half and cut it in half again and on one of the ends just randomly pull bits out so it looks all bitty and uneven because that's going to be a really good sponge to apply blood because it's all sporadic okay so that's something you can do prior to watching what we're going to do now so that you've got your blood ready to fill so if you want to do that go ahead and i will sorry there's something on my screen right let me just get rid of this i do advise you put like newspaper or something down on the surface you're working on just so that it doesn't get too messed up and i have baby wipes in hand right we're gonna look at different things to use for 
fix. So I'm gonna, first I'm gonna start with, if I can find it, this is just a red lip liner, okay? So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna draw a simple scratch, okay? You can do this, do you want me to do it with red eyeshadow actually? Let me show you with red eyeshadow, you can do it with a liner. No, edit all that bit, go back to the, go back to the red lip liner. Okay, so we're gonna do it with a red liner. And what I'm gonna do, it's gonna be really hard to show you. I'm gonna start here, I'm gonna flick. Oh, this is very orange, that's fine. And then I'm gonna take my finger and I'm gonna pull and flick. See how that's looking already? That's just with a liner. And then, And then I'm going to take an angle brush and I'm going to take a brown eyeshadow, just a dark brown. I'm going to use this one here from my Revolution palette. And I'm going to tap it in. And what I'm going to do, I'm gently going to take the brown eyeshadow through the centre. Barely touching it, just to give it some definition. If you've got a deeper red pencil, that might work even better. Can you see how that just adds like a definition to the scratch? There. You can flick it. There we go. The reason we flick is because when you look at a scratch, it has a point of entry and then an exit point. So it comes in and it flicks off in one direction or the other. Sometimes it will be in the centre and scratch yourself, but this is just really basic. Okay, so I'm gonna just add a tiny bit more, just to really, so you can see it on the camera. Just right in the middle, just to add some definition to it, to make it look more 3D and less 2D. Okay, and then what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna find my blood. I'm going to take a tiny bit of blood and I'm going to pour a tiny bit of blood on some kitchen towel. Just a little dot. And then I'm going to get a tiny paintbrush like this. You could use anything you've got laying around. You could use cocktail sticks if you've got them. I'm just going to use a brush because I haven't got any cocktail sticks. I'm just going to gently run a little bit of blood through the cut because we don't want it bleeding everywhere it's just a scratch do you see simple and it's just stuff that i've got indoors laying around and with if i try and show you with this i don't think this is going to be very good because it's a little bit thicker than a cocktail stick but you could apply the blood with a cocktail stick, just a little tiny bit. Like so, can you see that? Yeah, yes, yes, yes. The reason we um, learn these basic FX kits is because, let me rub that off. Sometimes on stage, part of the act might have an injury or something and we need to know how to just do a really quick really easy get it on scratch now next what am i gonna do what am i gonna do right let me hang on okay so next we're gonna look at how to create a scratch using a sponge so on your kitchen sponge you've got a rough part and the spongy part. On the rough part, just if you can get some scissors and gently chop away at it, do tiny, tiny little holes because you want it to kind of resemble this. Please don't use a scouring sponge, it's too dangerous. So just do it like that. And then what this is, is it's called a stipple sponge. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna take some of our blood on the stipple sponge and we're gonna do Oh, there's not enough on there. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Let's get a little bit of our fake blood. 
I'm using I'm not using my own that I've made guys because um the supermarket didn't near me didn't have what I needed. Right. And we're just gonna <gasps> see really basic scratch. And then if we wanted to go one step further, we could get a blending brush. If I can find a blending brush. Oh here, there's one right here. We could get like a blusher colour okay and we could lay down some blush color and then what this blush color does it represents skin irritation so if you know if you scratched yourself it the skin around it all goes red doesn't it and then if we go back to our blood i'm just going to try and wipe some on the sponge see what this does take some of it off and then if we go over that looks even better can you see and it just looks like a scratch now you might come up with a completely different way to create a scratch should we see what you could try a toothbrush I'm not sure what a toothbrush will do Again, you can lay down a little bit of blusher, tiny bit of blusher, and then go over the top of the blusher with the toothbrush. Yep, toothbrush works fine as well. And we're just flicking, just flicking it out because we've really grazed it. You can even test it on your elbow for that grazed elbow look. So what I did, I literally put a little bit, tiny bit down the centre of the toothbrush, swelled it on a bit of tissue, and then I flicked it. I've run out now. Okay, so a tooth, if you can't get the sponge, try it with a toothbrush. Try it without some irritation, try it with some irritation. See how you, see how you go. Oh God. My hand is red. <sighs> right, next, next, we're going to look at doing a 3D cut with scar wax. You can make your own scar wax with um, flour and Vaseline. And you want to use, so if you're using two, one, to every one tablespoon, to every one teaspoon of Vaseline, you want one teaspoon of flour, or you can try and use baby powder, but I would try and use flour. If you're gluten-free or anything, use corn flour. And then you want to make it into like a paste like this, okay? You can, if you want to go the extra step, mix in a tiny touch of your foundation colour so that it already matches your skin. Once you've made your homemade scar wax, I want you to get a little piece and I want you to roll it. It's quite sticky. And then we're gonna apply and we're gonna press it out. And we want these two sides pressed out so that it's on the skin. And then you can take, um, have you got the end, you could put the end of a spoon or something very flat um, like if your mum or dad has got any of them um, like points cards or anything they don't use anymore put a little bit of Vaseline on the edge and use the flat edge and we're just gonna flatten the scar wax out. Now we don't want to take the scar wax too far away from the injury because we want to keep it where it is. So if you've done too much, you can go over the top and scrape it off and then put, put it to the side where you don't use. This is very difficult. Oh, right. I'm just scraping off those edges. Okay. Right. Right, now I've made 
my scar wax hole here I'm just flattening it out there we go right once your scar wax is on can you see you want a powder now you can use baby powder if you've got corn flour you can use a bit of corn flour but you can just use baby powder I'm just going to use the powder that I've got here which is not the right one so I'm not going to use that at all huh. let's find another just make sure it's translucent or your skin colour and I'm going to take just a cotton round like this I'm going to take a touch of powder and I want to powder all over that being very gentle not to ruin the shape of it now if you look from the side it doesn't really raise up above my hand that's what's going to keep it looking realistic you want to use powder to powder it in because it's very sticky it'd be hard to paint and what you can do you can use lipsticks you can use eyeshadows I'm going to use an eyeshadow again a blush toned eyeshadow just to create that irritation I'm going to be a little bit gentle because I don't want it to lift off the skin can you see what I'm doing and I'm just taking that around the edge to create some irritation there just to create a bit of irritation and um, it covers those um covers those edges as well there we go just a little bit there and then what you could do like i said you can get your red lipstick or you could carry on with eyeshadow i'm going to use paint just because i don't have a red lipstick that i can dismantle for this so i'm just going to go in and I'm gonna on the second I'm just gonna go in and I'm just gonna paint inside just to create and I'm gonna do on the outside as well What you can do, um, if you've got face paints, you can use face paints and use the water to really dilute it. We just want to colour that. Get some of that red tone on there. Let's see, I've got, I think I've got a brighter red here. But play around with the colours, don't be afraid. You don't have to get it right the first time. Okay. And then I'm going to finish it off with a little bit of blood on the inside. So I'm just going to take my blood on a tissue again, or you can pour it straight in, it's up to you. My cocktail stick. And I'm just going to put blood in there. And we'll put it right underneath. Can you see? And then we can go back to our toothbrush and gently... Oh, picking up stuff, fluff. Gently, oh, don't worry if it comes up by the way, just press it back down, just be gentle about it. And we can gently tap that blood around. Can you see? Cool. <laughs> These are some really easy tricks that you can just do, right? lastly scars right 
if you've got like a flesh toned lip liner that's more pinky tone you can literally just create a draw a line blend it into the skin a little bit if you find it's not the right color you can go in with your angle brush and something a bit pinkier and then just tap tap in the line the same way we did with the scratch and we just get more of a scar look about it so it looks like it's healed <laughs> excuse my nose i've got terrible hay fever cool so they're really really basic and they're really easy what i want you guys to do is i want you to create a scenario this is if you want to no let me start again if you guys want to i want you to create a scenario and send it into stacy so do it on yourself or on your mum or on your dad or on your sister or on your brother whoever will let you work on them while you're in lockdown and i want you to literally on their face or on their arm whatever create a scenario and by scenario i mean maybe they've fell over and this is their injuries from falling over maybe they've fell off their bike are they going to have knee injuries shin injuries lots of irritation i also want you guys to come up with bruises so with your sponge again on the spongy side when i told you to pull it out that would be really good for creating bruise looks now the colors you need are like yellows purples little tiny bit of black but not too much um browns a bluey tone all different kind of bruises so come up with your own style of bruise if you can try and look at references like if you've got a bruise yourself like i've got a cut here so if i wanted to do a scar i could look at that as a scar if you've got bruises yourself you can look at your own bruises it's great and i want you to have a go and then if you want to do this please send all your looks into stacy and then stacy can send them on to me because i would love to see your scenarios and what you've created using all these little techniques go crazy with what you use as well if you want to use lipsticks use lipsticks if you want to use eyeshadow if you want to use eyeliners if you want to use lip liners anything you've got indoors um go for it if you create the different types of blood let me know how you made it let stacy know so that she can tell me because i am so excited and i think it is something for you guys to do indoors that we're going to be doing this in sessions anyway so i would love to see you get some practice okay all right thank you so much for watching today's video i can't wait to see your scenarios i'm really excited because this is my favorite and uh, i will hopefully see you all very soon get going see you later